In this video, we're going to take a look at this problem here, and that's then going to lead us on to introduce uh, this section. So the curve C has equation y equals x plus 3 over x squared plus x take away 2. The line y equals k intersects the curve C. Find the points of intersection, if any, when k equals 1, k equals minus 1 half, k equals minus 1. OK, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take this purely as an algebraic problem first. OK, then we're going to see graphically what's going on and how then we can generalize this. OK, so that's going to be our process. So I'm not going to sketch the graph yet. I'm just going to go straight in and say, right, well, if it's intersecting the line y equals 1, then I can work out points of intersection by solving this equation. OK? So, multiplying up by the denominator, we're going to get x plus 3 equals x squared plus x take away 2. So if I put everything onto the right-hand side, we've got the x squared. Take x from both sides, we get 0 there. And then take 3 from both sides, we get minus 5. So x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 5. OK, so the points of intersection for when k is 1 will be minus root 5, 1. OK, because y equals 1 on those points. And root 5, 1. OK, so there are two points of intersection. Oh, didn't really need to rub all of that out. OK, right, now k is a half, minus a half. So same job. We're going to put it equal to minus a half. OK, so multiplying up by the denominator, x plus 3 is going to be equal to minus a half x squared, minus a half x, and minus 2 times minus a half is just plus 1. Right, this time I'm going to multiply through by 2 first uh, to get rid of the fractions. Now I'm going to move everything onto the left-hand side. So we've got x squared uh, plus 3x, and then take 2 from both sides, so plus 4 equals 0. OK? Now, this quadratic... If I put it into my quadratic solver, so 1, 3, and 4, we get minus 3 plus root 7i over 2, and minus 3 minus root 7i over 2. Now, we can identify that the discriminant is equal to 3 squared, so 9 take away 4, lots of 1 times 4. So 9 take away 16, and so it's negative 7. OK, so because the discriminant is negative, therefore there are no uh, points of intersection. So no points of intersection. OK, right, so that's k is minus a half. So now let's look at k equals minus 1. So x plus 3 is equal to minus x squared minus x plus 2. Let's move everything onto the left-hand side. So we'll get x squared uh, plus 2x and take 2 from both sides. We're going to get plus 1 equals 0. Now this is x plus 1 squared. So x must be equal to minus 1. And so there is one point of intersection at minus 1, minus 1. OK, so that as an algebraic process uh, is quite straightforward. OK, um, now visually, what's going on? What are we doing? OK, so now we're going to go into sketch this graph. So this is equal to x plus 3 over uh, x plus 2 x minus 1. So factorising the denominator there. OK? Now, 
The denominator is 0 at minus 2 and 1, so we have two vertical asymptotes. So x equals minus 2 and x equals 1. Now, where is it crossing the x-axis? That's when the numerator is 0, so at minus 3. And how about uh, any horizontal asymptotes? Well, the order of the polynomial in the numerator is less than the one in the denominator, and so it will be tending to uh, uh, y equals 0, Okay, the x-axis. So that's a horizontal asymptote. How about where it crosses the y-axis? Now, that's when x is 0, and so that's going to be 3 over minus 2, so minus 3 halves somewhere down here. Wow. Okay. Right, now with that in mind then, can we sketch this curve? So we know that the curve is trapped between this region and it's got to be below the x-axis because it's crossing through the y-axis at minus 3 halves. We can't cross the x-axis because it only crosses the x-axis at minus 3 and so the curve must do something like this, some kind of shape like that, okay? Now, as for either side here, well, for that, we'd probably best check whether we're above or below the x-axis here by trying a value out. So if we tried x equals 2, we get 2 plus 3, which is positive in the numerator. Then we've got 2 plus 2, which is positive. 2 take away 1 is positive. And so that means we're above. So it must be above for that part of the graph. And then for, um, let's try x equals minus 4. Let's see what's happening beyond uh, this point. So minus 4 plus 3 is negative. Then we've got minus 4 plus 2 is negative. And minus 4 take away 1 is negative. And so negative divided by a positive is negative. And so we're below the x-axis here. So that must mean that the curve comes down this way and crosses through the x-axis here, because it can't come up this way and then come back over, Okay, because we only cross the x-axis once. So it must be coming down here through minus 3. Right, I'm just going to be a little bit careful here. Minus 3, and then bounces around and comes back on itself to tend towards the uh, x-axis. And so this is the shape of my graph. OK? Right. Now, visually, what's going on with what we were doing previously, right? So we were trying out these lines. So we had y equals 1 for the first one. So y equals 1, let's say, pop that there. Now remember, my graph's not to scale, right? But we've got these two points here of intersection, which relate to those two points there, OK? Then we've got k is equal to minus a half, where we had no points of intersection. So at minus a half, OK, the curve, the line rather, must be doing something like this. So no points of intersection there for y equals minus a half. But then for k equals minus 1, we've got one point of intersection. And so it must be hitting the curve right on that stationary point. Right there. So that point has to be minus 1, minus 1. OK, so let me just move my minus 3 halves. And that must be minus 1.
Okay? So, in actual fact, we can then work out, because, uh, you know, what we're doing here is we're then seeing, right, where does the curve actually exist? For what range of values does the curve exist for? If only I could work out the value of k that corresponded with this stationary point there, okay, with that point. So if I could work out that, that would be great. So how can I do that? Well, if I put the curve x plus 3 over x squared plus x take away 2 equal to some general k, okay, then if I multiply up by the denominator, we get x plus 3 is equal to kx squared plus kx take away 2k. Rearrange to get everything on the right-hand side. We're getting kx squared. Now, I'm going to take x from both sides and factorise to have k minus 1x. And then I've got minus 2k take away 3. Right? So, this quadratic that I have here either has two real distinct real solutions, one repeated real root, or no real roots, okay? And they relate to the discriminant of my quadratic. So what I need to do is I need to look at the discriminant of this. If I put that equal to zero, if the discriminant is equal to zero, then I have repeated real roots for this quadratic, which means I will locate this point here where the line is crossing the curve once, and this line here that I don't know yet that's crossing the curve once there. So the discriminant can tell me the range of values for which this curve does not exist. And likewise, it can tell me the range of values for which it does exist. So I'm going to find the discriminant. Okay, and put that equal to zero. So, um, k take away one squared, take away four lots of a times c equals zero. So we get k squared take away 2k plus 1, then plus 8k squared, then plus 12k equals 0. So 9k squared plus 10k plus 1 equals 0. So 9, 10 and 1 into my quadratic solver. And we get 9k plus 1, k plus 1 equals 0. So the two values of k are minus 1 ninth and minus 1. The k equals minus 1 corresponds with this point here, as I found. And k equals minus 1 ninth would give me that point there. OK, so I've actually found the region or the range of the function. Let me just get rid of that one, and I'll get rid of that one as well. I'm not interested in that anymore. Okay. y equals, I should put. So for what values of y does this curve exist? Well, it exists for uh, y being less than or equal to minus 1 and greater than or equal to minus 1 ninth, okay? Um, that would be its range. 
and it doesn't exist between those two values. So you could modify this to be uh, an inequality if you wanted to. If you wanted to find the range of values for which uh, y equals k intersects the curve, then you just need to put this greater than or equal to 0. If you wanted to find the values of k for which this curve, of which uh, y equals k does not intersect the curve, then you just put this less than 0 and solve the quadratic inequality that goes with it. Okay, And so this uh, will allow us to find um, the range of values for rational functions like this and also go on to uh, find stationary points as well without using any calculus techniques.